Afric Monarch's lifespan minus 50%, National Unrest and Monthly Autonomy change, and also Disorganized Army. So, oh, <laughs> lose sailors. Oh no. Alright lads, welcome to the uh, Decline of the Golden Horde. So basically, just to give you uh, a little bit of context, this is the Antebellum mod, and we're going to be playing as the Golden Horde, which has been seeing uh, uh, centuries of decline at this point. Uh, so we're going to have to be stomping out rebellions and just generally trying to keep our nation together. We start out with minus two stability, and, and as you can see here, the decline of the Golden Horde. So we will suffer negative modifiers in a series of disaster-like events, which, which can only be stopped by completing our mission. Here are our mission. We've got to do this stuff. So we have to codify succession law, so we need to have decent horde unity and stability at least one, and we don't get that thing anymore. If we reform the army, so we have manpower at least 35%, generals at least one, and army size at least 80% of the force limit. We get disorganized army being removed and restore authority. We have to defeat the revolts of Kazan, Nogai, and Crimea. And then after that, we get to have uh, our own custom mission tree. So it's going to be a bit of a bit of a long road ahead of us, I think. Now, for me, the best way to get monarch points is to be raising, right? So I think that instead of sitting here and, and like calming down, I think we should just be going after these smaller states, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But inevitably, we're going to have revolts and such. So we need to be a little bit careful. We also start losing money. Average monarch's lifespan minus 50%. National unrest and monthly autonomy change, and also disorganized army. So, oh, <laughs> just gonna be a bit painful. I'm tempted to get rid of these forts, you know. That would provide some easy income. Okay. Was that Shao Rook? Nice. That's happened. All right, let's go massacre the Russians. Hunt down the privateers. Oh, there's a port here. Okay, cool. I didn't, didn't realize there was a port in the Caspian. <laughs> I like that. That's my first time playing as the uh, as the Golden Horde in this mod, so I'm sure that I'm inevitably doing something wrong, because uh, usually there's in-depth stuff that you need to be doing, and uh, I'm not doing that right now. And I'm fighting him in the mountains. But that is a gold province, is it not? Okay, that's useful for our economy, at least. And how good are our troops? Uh, worse than everyone else's, but like, ward, so better than everyone else's. Teth of Shahrukh already, wonderful. All right, that should theoretically be this war done. Because here's my opinion on hordes, right? You're either expanding or you're dying. All right, that's, that's it. Until you can like get to a place where that's no longer the case, that's what it is. So, in this case, I think that's just that, but more extreme. So, I'm going to attempt to out-expand uh, out the uh, uh, the disasters that we're facing. Is that the smartest idea? I have no clue. We will find out together. So, how do we get rid of this first one? Stability at least to upgrade our stability three times. Negative modifiers? Okay, so we need 300. Raising this stuff should give us a decent chunk of power. That should get rid of that one. Reform the army. We need manpower at level at least 35%. That's going to be hard. Uh, especially with having our army size at least 80% of the force limit. Maybe mercenaries and restore authority. Well, that's just a waiting game. Right, I'm going to go ahead and delete these four. Because that's like four ducats a month that we kind of need. And then I will develop the gold mine. Hopefully put us in the positive. All right, we're going to take all this stuff and coalition be damned. Right, let's take everything first because I like satisfying things. Excellent. Okay, raise all these lands. Gonna bump our stability up by one and then start coring. And then we go after the next guy. That's a lot. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's like a lot of troops. We need a national unrest guy. Even if it costs us like that much a month, like four a month, that's fine. We need that. Okay, see how like that dropped it by 25,000 troops? Okay, here we go. <laughs> We've been trapped, okay. Okay, they split up their troops. That's very handy. Turn around, deal with that army that they've just got contest areas with. Spread out, kill them all. Have we had a free merchant this entire time and I've not been using him? Also, I was complaining about money issues. <laughs> okay, it is Reconquest Castle's Belli, but we're getting cursed some aggressive expansion here. Shouldn't be too bad though. Do we have cause on these areas? We do. Okay, that should maybe get rid of our... God, they have the same issues we do. That's another one. Flood across the plains, boys. I'm very glad I got rid of these forts now. I am going to take this build for something thing because we're going to get a custom mission tree soon. Going to grab ourselves another general, even though he's trash. There's the Siege of Kazan. That's 100% against Kazan. Pay that stuff back. And we get no aggressive expansion and 180 ducats for our troubles. So that's good. Here we go. 10 horde unity. So I think I should probably get rid of, like, this general. <laughs> They're all 1-1. One, one. So what's the last rebellion? No guy needs to revolt next. I'm not a fan of this manpower stuff. We are struggling a little bit on that front. If we could catch these, like, stupid 1k, that'd be amazing. There we go. Lose sailors. Oh no. Whatever will we do? Try and avoid the river crossing where possible. Does Muscovy just have, like, cores everywhere or something? They've got claims. Cores. I was just wondering because I had Muscovite separatists in one province. All right, that's that lot crush. All right, let's gather up the troops. And I think I am going to go after Volvoga. But they are causing me a little bit of an issue. And now I've got a bit of cash. I'm going to get rid of this advisor. And I'm going to use it to try and get the same advisor, basically, but cheaper. There we go. That was worth it. It's like three ducats a month. I think I would have made money. We're going to do with the manpower one last, which means probably going after this lot. Okay. Or I guess we've got other things we need to be doing. Please don't lose that. How many men are we in deficit? 8,000. Okay. 
That last mission about manpower might take a little, a little longer than we thought. Mm, that's an interesting amount of troops there. Did not realize they'd have another like 6,000 troops. That was a bad time to lock in. You got like three hordes armies after you. All right, two rebels. That's fine. That's okay. We'll be okay. <laughs> Suffering, isn't it? Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Uh, how big are those rebellions? Mm. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Let's just kill the traitors first. And then I think I definitely need to develop that gold mine. Doesn't help that our ruler, by the way, has a 022. I would love him to be dead, even at the cost of one stability at this point. Where are you retreating to? How are you retreating? Oh, don't tell me. I hate it when it considers like Terra Incognita, um, or at least like land that's uncolonized as like retreatable land. Because look, look how far up he's going. He's literally disappearing into the wilderness. How does he retreat from an army and go, I'm going to go through the Golden Horde and into there? Because he's going to come back now. All right, thank you for helping my economy stay afloat. Okay, well, that gives us the ability to trigger that. So that's nice. Now we just have stability of at least one and manpower. Let me get rid of this fort now. There'll be a lot of little guys to bully around here. Like Theodora, for example. I'm just looking for wars that won't cost me manpower, pretty much. That's that's the plan. Okay, well, those are all the rebels we have to deal with. That's nice. I have three Carracks? No wonder I'm, like, losing money. I don't even, We're a horde! Why do we have boats? Four ducats a month. That's that's useful. Pure professionalism. Okay, some of these guys have Miltech for, like Kiev, who we're going to be fighting. All right, one more stability. We can codify our succession laws. And then we don't even have to handle the whole pretend arrivals to the throne on event on monarch death thank you kumania is giving us renaissance we desperately need oh feudalism sorry not renaissance i think we might we're literally one of the last in the world it's just us and uzbek everyone else has it sort of loath to declare war until we have cover shot plus one completed mission secure central asia that's awesome i like having government reforms tied to uh tied to missions that's great check how much do we need what do you need to release 75? So we can hold on for a little. On. <laughs> 25 admin. Yes, please. One more month. And we don't even have to deal with that event. Excellent. Now we need to reform the army, which to be honest, just requires us to sit here at peace, which I'm like happy to do. Unless I see like someone really easy to pick off. I'm going to go for the manpower one for now, at least. I'll switch over to cavalry shock later. Honestly, I'm going to grow my manpower and then just spam out uh, mercenaries. <laughs> first things first, though. Let's go ahead and embrace feudalism. Does put us like heavily in debt by like, well, only 400. But I'm going to invest that into our gold mine. We should be fine. We get expand golden horde. Lovely. One, two, three. Flacken, which should put us over the threshold. Now we need our army to be at least 80% of force. There we go. After nicking money from the tribes, we're now set. And look, we can do it without having to deal with any of the poor events. Unlockable mission tree. Wonderful. Oh, we'll stay a horde and our new mission tree will lead us to the reunification of Mongol Empire. Or we change to Tataria. I don't know what I want to do. You know what? We're going to settle down because usually I'd go with a horde. So we're now Tataria. And we get the golden kingdom, which gives us plus 50%. Income from vassals. Okay. Tartar nobility. Interesting. Okay. Well, embrace feudalism. That's nice. Question of faith. Okay. This, so this is like... Oh, this is cool. Number of loans are less than one and we get like covering from crisis. We still have the tribes, which is weird. I don't know why that is, but I like it. I suppose it's the same as like the uh, the Cossacks. Okay. A 633. He's got 20 legitimacy, but he's a 633. So he's legitimate in my eyes. I'm tempted to go expansion to zealotry just because if we stay... Tengri, that's going to always be a thing. We'll see what happens when the question of faith thing happens. So what's our mission tree like about then? Conquering the Mongols, basically, but like making them feudal? Interesting. Have westernization of the Golden Lord. How do we do that? Well, you know what? We're in a pretty good place, so we might as well just start invading people. Why do I have so... Oh, I've got some... Oh, I've lost all of my... No, I lost my Horde cast spell. I... It's a really strange army, I'll grant you that, but I can't be bothered to change them. Uh, and what we are going to do is co-belligerent this lot. So we'll be fighting everyone. Because just because we're no longer a horde doesn't mean we don't have to act like a horde. I'm trying to have this this 12k run around behind us and clear up anything that might threaten us. Remember, we don't have any forts. Wait, do we still have... I think we still have horde unit types. No, we don't. Interesting. But we're still just destroying people. What's our cavalry ratio? I can't just like throw my... This is my smallest army. Right, there's a quick siege. Now you can help with the cleanup. Tataria. I like that name. Growing me. Initially, I did not like it. I almost didn't pick... That option or this option just because of the name, but I actually this has grown on me. All right, now we've got a formal army here that I can actually use to engage pretty much all of them and engage them. I shall. I don't like that two star general. And we're about to take a bunch of territory. Man, that two star general or three star general now, he got a better one. He upgraded from 5 2 to a 5 5. My god, we've got a, like a 1 1 or a 0 2. So maybe we go sit on his capital and we just don't fight him. Really? <laughs> really, Razan? Really? Was that, was that absolutely necessary? You sure? I'd really love to get the Muscovites out of this war without having to actually fight that. More importantly, it's we don't, we can't afford for him to unify with the rest of the armies. Because if they unify under that general, then we will lose. Ah, here we go. Conversion. So we stay Tengri, or we go Nestorian, 
or Sunni or Orthodox. I like the idea of a settled Tengri people. That, no, that's funny. That's funny to me. So as part of that, we're going to go expansion as Zealot because I'm pretty sure no one else is Tengri pretty much, apart from this lot over here. It goes back to your Muslim. Yeah. It's so painful to take. I really want to try and play E4 with an eye tracker. There's um a piece of technology, brilliant piece of technology. It's for um, less abled uh, individuals who perhaps struggle with like traditional uh, gaming. Um, and there's like an, it's like an eye controller, so you can you you can literally like using a webcam, you can look up different places on the screen. And it does stuff, and I want to see if I could use it to play you four. I can't push past these forts without like leaving myself completely open here. Oh, okay, we beat the we beat the five star general. Wait, firstly, five stars really late. Secondly, that's actually a bad thing. Um, the reason it's a bad thing is because now he's going to retreat and join the rest of his troops. Ooh, or you could fall into our trap that I had planned this entire time. <laughs> We've taken out a loan, but we're also going to renew a loan, so. And now we're going to take out another loan. So basically, we're back where we started. I should have just extended the loan. Oh my god, these forts are so painful to take. All right, we'll definitely take the next attack. But of course, they went around me. I don't know that I can finish this war. I think it's, it's like we're getting to the point of diminishing returns. Um, okay, Adoyev, Polotsk, White Ruthenia. If I were to kick White Ruthenia out, then we might have enough non-fort provinces. Because my usual tactic for kicking people out is I go stand in the capital, not take it, but like take all the provinces around it. Uh, which usually works fine, but everyone has a fort, so we can't access anything. Nice thing is we've like had a couple of really, really nice army tradition events. We've got 54 now, so I'm actually going to gamble and grab a couple of generals, maybe. Oh, cool. I can't actually leave. <laughs> I think I'm going to kick Muscovy out of the wall. He's on low. Get him to uh, an all those alliances with the guys bordering us. Well, Chernigov's not going to exist anymore. Spoilers. Uh, war operation. I think the Golden Kingdom, I should still be allowed to retain tributaries. I think. Ruthenia, yep, I can get them out. The way I was also out. What do I have to do for my mission? Stabilize the country. Yeah, sure. And then I need to own, like, oh, wait, people need to like me. This is going to be harder than I thought. Five countries need to have at least 50 opinion of me. But they're not, that's never going to happen, is it? They will hate. There is no way that's going to work. All right, I'm going to take you as a vassal. You'll give up your claims in me. And we go forwards. Okay. So welcome to the team. St just stop hating me. Okay, well, let's try and work on that. Prove relations. If I was orthodox, this would work easy. Okay. So, who's most likely? I'll do the stabilized thing in a sec. Novgorod, Belarusero. He isn't horrible. Minus 174. Okay, you aren't horrible either. I need five of these bastards. Five? Okay, it's a froji we, we should be able to get. So, pay off all our loans. How do I do westernization of the Golden Horde? How do I do that? And then I need to ally countries. Okay, stabilize the country. Gain manpower. And I get claims on Crimea. That's nice. For God's sake, I need to... Oh, we instantly annex them if we get 200 relations with them. That's useful. Okay, we can do that. All right, do the stupid reconciliation mission. Oh, or rule has diplomatic skill of these four and we have a statesman. We've got three. Ah, <laughs> there's a 50% cheaper improved relations guy. Let's get him. Yeah, that's what I feared. Uh, Galicia Valinia. That's also technically a chance. I don't even know if this is possible. Like the numbers don't just, they just don't add up. I'm gonna have to start dishing out cash. Oh, I really wish I'd gone orthodox now. That would have been real smart. I've got one. Oh God. All right, boys, as you can see here, uh, in the interest of time, all of the guys that I was improving relations with, I decided just to add 100 opinions so I could actually show off uh, the mission trade a little bit. Otherwise, we'd just be sitting here waiting for me to tick down my gross expansion. So we're going to do that and click this button. So this gives us no more historical rival stuff. It legitimizes, legitimizes our claims. Uh, it gives us unjustified, unjustified demands minus 25%, which is pretty good. And cost to fabricate claims, which is also quite nice. So now we can go ahead and try and subjugate these slabs. So here we need 15 provinces in Ruthenia. So we need four provinces in actual Ruthenia and 10 more in Russia. So let's go ahead and do that. I think it's it's a bit strange that we have to make everyone like us in order to make to, in order to conquer them. I feel like there should be like an antagonize option. Also like a special Casas Bella would be nice. Well, that's just because I'm a sucker for those things. Let's see, will it break my UI? Oh, no, it didn't. Excellent. Okay. So it's all the pretty, pretty standard ones. We don't get anything special, unfortunately. I think we're gonna go aggressive expansion impact, to be honest, prevent those coalitions. Also, my favorite pastime, deleting fort. We're not a horde anymore, so it doesn't really make much sense, but still. Oh yeah, it's cheaper to fabricate claims, isn't it? Do I have a claim here? I do. Okay, might as well get another one. And here, do I have Belarus zero? Go after Vladimir first, because I kind of want to co-belligerent Yaroslav and Rostov and just take it all in one war. Are you able to do that? Yep. All right, time to do what I do best. No, it's true, because it rhymed. Oh, nice, look at this. God rule is a 633 that's kind hearted and strict. <laughs> what a legend. All right, the Novgorod uh, should be sending troops as well. Meantime, let's just keep getting claims on the others, like Ruthenia. 321. Not as good as the others, huh? That's uh, a few more troops than I was expecting. Let's uh, pull back, send in the 17k. I should have co uh Doiv. That's fine. I'll just take that. I'll just 
That makes him anyway. So Musk is going to get a new <laughs> a new guy in charge, which hopefully means no more three-star general if that's his king. How are you only on medium? In what world do you think, yes, fellow zero, better or zero, they're th that lot, they're going to come and save us. Your country's fully occupied and you're fleeing from the uh, from Tatarian troops. Good relations, good relations. Oh, yeah, right. I, I, I forgot that I did that. Go after Ryzen. Goes the war with Tver. And we'll fight everyone. <laughs> that seems healthy. All right, 70k. All right, 17k are going to be... Hunting down troops, other lot sieging, sticking together, doing the business. You know how it is. We've had no real, like, dicey battles. Everything has just been a stomp every time that we march into someone. Even the Frogies get involved. I don't know how to pronounce that word, I'm not gonna lie. I, I say it like I know, like, with confidence. I say it with chest. Zephrogi, but, like, I do not know if that's the right way to pronounce it. What's that? Your actual name? Hmm, irrelevant. <laughs> I will tell you what you will be called. Just stack wipe off the stack wipe. How many men have we killed? Like 20,000. These are not large nations, ladies and gentlemen. These are not big, big guys, you know? It's, it's not it's not going well for them. Okay, to there, we can just sort of kick out. So let's do that. We're going to occupy his provinces apart from his capital. He should peace out. No one's stuck past? Yeah, no one's stuck past. We, we've done well here. All right, let's push up into Smolensk now. This has been a very, like, successful war. I, I'm, I'm not used to having this much, like... As many things go right, usually someone sneaks past, someone does this, someone does that. But like, no, this has gone well. Okay, Smolensk is going to die. Ryazan is going to die. Yaroslav is also going to die. So I don't really need to waste any sort of war score on that. Anything, go and like end your rivalry with people. Let's make your peace with God. All right, let's spread these wars out, I suppose. Oh, boy. Well, the thing is, that looks like a large coalition, right? You're like, oh, well, that's horrible. Okay, we'll go. Uh, Vologda, we can take out now. Novgorod, Theodor Theodoros, yeah, sure, that's a bit of an issue. Uh, Kiev. A lot of these guys we have truces with. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I like the businesses. I don't really want to fight the businesses now. They're not scary. I just don't want to fight them until we have a claim on their, uh, capital. I knew this would happen. Remember what I said about the whole, they'll just, like, usually they sneak troops past. They did it. The perfect war is done, boys. <laughs> Shut it down. Go home. The morale is ridiculously high. That's why we stack weapon everyone. Our morale is just ridiculous. We have the second largest army in the world. And our army quality is, I mean, it's far and away the best. So, right, like, the Han have 115% discipline. Neutral karma, an advisor, and what, their king, maybe? I don't know. If they got a strict king, they'd have 120% discipline. All right, that's on 0%. Let's go and march and, and take that. Thank you for helping us out there, rebels. It's much obliged. Okay. Yeah, if you didn't like that, uh, Slavic nations, then you're not going to like what happens next. Bear in mind, I'm not trying to annex Slotsk. So just taking the fort should be enough to convince them of the folly of, uh, of resistance. Now, this might get us stack wiped because those troops from Novgorod could be anywhere. And Spy could be anywhere. I mean, they're probably going to come from there. We can get them to an old alliances. Slotsk, right? White right, Ruthenium. Right, look, all right, boys. I will be perfectly candid with you. It is about 6 a.m. I have had about three hours sleep. Uh, and I need to, uh, I need to head to my graduation. <laughs> so... I'm very tired. My graduation, by the way, is a four and a half hour drive without stopping. Inevitably, we'll need to stop at some point. Now, White Ruthenia is co belligerented so I'm going to be taking as much stuff as possible. They're also larger, and they are starting to get into Europe. I'm a little bit confused as to why we don't know what Europe is. It's not like the Mongols didn't, like, get to, you know, Vienna. But we know certain things. Like, for example, we know that the Pyrenees exist. We know that the Cantabrian Mountains uh, exist. But that's about it. It's more of a, an exploratory mission. You know, we're, we're actually just, um, we're explorers. We're not conquerors. We just want to see what's out there. And unfortunately, these people, look, watch this. Lithuania. That's a bad example because I was going to be like, oh, they don't give us military access. Look, Novgorod don't give us military access. We just want to explore. So if they're not going to give us military access for the uh, advancement of humankind, <laughs> that's going to be an issue, isn't it? When's my thing with Perm? Uh, I kind of want to finish them off. Now, do you think this counts as Fort Zone of Control? Nope. <laughs> Does not. But they most likely will. I just want to clear up as many of these nations as possible before I discover Europe. So it might actually be worth waiting in this war until I can fight Musk. Because I can take Yaroslav as well. You see what I mean? It doesn't make sense that I would have to make these guys like me for me to do this. Because this was always the plan. I think I'm the number one power in terms of uh, development. That's interesting. It's all of it. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. It just made us discover Europe. That's actually horrible. That's really bad. Uh, because they couldn't see us before, so they wouldn't be affected from aggressive expansion. Now they probably will be. So it's Mongol aristocracy. Oh, absolutely. The ruling class of the Golden Horde is still largely composed of descents from the Kiat, the Mar Mangud, the Sisivut, and the Gongirad clans of the Mongols. Although they've mostly followed into the period of reform, ensuring the nobility maintain the Mongol identity may be abused. Let's do that. Sounds like fun. Do we have banners? No, we don't have banners. Why does it say reform the ban- Game, don't excite me. So I guess we can see Europe now. Andalusia's been doing well. Well, it hasn't actually. 
probably be conquering that. Frankie has. Uh, well, it looks like England took back Hull. So that's nice. But they failed to take out Cornwall. How did you... No, they took out one or two Cornish provinces. They didn't take the rest out. Oh, we can see your troops now. Hello. Or was I meant to help with that? Sorry. Sorry, mate. Well, we can declare the war first. Do you not have a fort? I could have sworn you had a fort here. Did you get rid of it? Yeah, you got rid of your forts. Yeah, I'm not going to take national ideas just because uh, we're going we're gonna to need some added power for what I had planned. Now, that's a coalition. See what I mean? Like, the Lendians had no idea who we were. No aggressive... Oh, they did have aggressive... Maybe I'm wrong. They could see me, but I couldn't see them. I didn't know they existed. Wait. This gets rid of my whole justification for doing this, of, like, exploring the world. Or, well, maybe they're lying to us. Maybe the maps are wrong, you know? How do we how do we know for sure? All right, Lendians. You can't attack White Ruthenia and then, like, get upset when I do it. I mean, you're doing the exact same thing. Overextension dangerously high by a little bit. So let's go ahead and consolidate development. And that should take us down by just under the threshold. That's lovely. The issue is I've got to wait a little while for the uh, pools to finish. So I can't actually I can't actually do too much yet. Is this going to be enough? Subjugate you Slavs. It actually might be. Uh, one more in the region of Russia. That gives us aggressive expansion impact and permanent claim. And then if we have Ruthenian culture provinces with separatism lower than one, we get cavalry combat ability. And then we can restore Kiev, apparently. Oh, well, there goes Georgia. But um, I think, <laughs> think they're gone as well. Interestingly, if we get this whilst Novgorod has less than 10 provinces, we also get 20 power projection, which is going to be useful considering it's really hard for us to get power projection. It's just conquer everywhere. Yeah, everywhere in Russia and Ruthenia. Lechtik in... What the hell is this? Lechtik. Lech, Lechtik. What? creates Poland. I am going to go invade Central Asia, though. Ah, that's why I shouldn't be doing this. Let's keep some troops in reserve. Are you allied to anyone big? I could hire an advisor. Let's just go murder the, uh, <laughs> the Uzbeks. Why not? Yeah, it is over 30% over extension, so I do need to wait for some cores to finish before I take them. Well, actually, I could probably take Yaroslav. It's where raising would come in so handy. Uh, I don't need, like, a lot of these. They're kind of just nicely on board. That's why I kept 20k in reserve. I kept my largest army to deal with rebels, because they are a bigger threat to me. Then other countries. That area is... Hello. All right, let's not forget he's a horde. So he's going to have decent troops. And that is a... Oh, I thought it was a 5-5. Five, five. No, that's just his ratios. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. Every time I say that there's a threat in this game, the game's like, oh, it's not a threat. Look at this. Uh, we have more ships. Yeah, go blockade the ports. <laughs> that, is, that is useless. Let's get these two slabs. Oh, there we go. Nice. Grant and state privilege, monastic temp. I don't know. Okay, well, let's get rid of this British diplomats. Where, where is, where is the monastic? Grant and state privilege, monastic temples. Where is that? Google this. I don't, I have no idea what this monastic temples thing is. I can't find it. You'd think it'd be under the religious one, right? And I can't see the other one. So that sucks. Ah, he seems to have slipped past me. Right into 20,000 more troops. All right, you can't get upset at me for conquering the Russians when the Russians are conquering themselves. That's, that's not my, like, I'm just trying to bring unity and peace here. Clearly, I, I'm the good guy. Look, I'm going to do this to protect Muscov, like Muscovy. Look, otherwise, they would have been annexed. Realize we have three stability. <laughs> Don't know how. Ah, there's the coalition, finally. It's not like I've been, like, particularly, like, this is a ridiculously aggressive campaign. You know, I've, I've, I've been taking co-belligerents. I've been taking everything. I'm not even a horde or using a special Casas Bella. This is just a normal Casas Bella. Byzantines invented a coalition. Nice. Ah. That's annoying. Well, that puts us on a little bit of a timer because I really don't want to fight 13,000 separate little, like, right, uh, tribes because it makes his life easy, uh, harder. So, I want to make his life easier by killing. I enjoy the fact that throughout this entire thing that our, uh, our legitimacy is still 42. Like, our populace is looking at the golden era that this man has ushered in. It's like, eh, but, like, still not sure. The true reform society brought wealth and prosperity and they're like, eh, he's okay. He's just a little bit better than he was before. Like, we're still not sure. Bring back the old guy. All right, apparently I have claims in this area. Um, uh, kind of just want to, like, stretch out, you know? Okay, we're going to actually have to kill that 13k. Just because his land's so big that, and he's got so many provinces that it matters. Unless I can swing it. Minus one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't win that. Is it done? It's done. Excellent. Look at that. Tatari. <laughs> oh, another mission. Uh, what's this one? Uh, invade Central Asia. Gives us permanent claims on Central Asia. Isn't that a lot? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we have filthy amount of claims everywhere. Permanent claims literally everywhere. 104% overextension. That is, that is bad. I'm going to need to concentrate some development. Right, does that help? It does. Just gets us under the cap. We have enough to uh, core everything. Claim our rivals. And to be honest, I think that's what we'll leave it for today, boys. I think, I, I mean, I set out to achieve. Uh, I mean, I, I think I achieved everything I set out to achieve. We have stabilized the Golden Horde, dealt with all the rebellions, gained a custom mission tree, settled down a little bit. Uh, and we're well on our way to dominating the entire world. We are the number one great power. Uh, we have more development by than anyone else by a healthy amount. I think now it's just a case of conquering everyone. I'm pretty sure even a coalition wouldn't be able to take us out at this point, considering we have 60,000 manpower and our troops are 
they're not as good as they were before, but they're still like pretty, uh, pretty in intense. And no one is joining a uh, coalition anymore. Like, I mean, there's this lot, but we can easily take that. Like, for example, they've got about 90,000 troops. We have about being lazy, about 60,000. Our force limit is is at its peak, but it's really not that big of a deal, the deal especially considering we have a gold mine. So yeah, this was the uh, Antibella mod. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend you go check it out. If you have any other sort of mods or challenges or anything else uh, you want me to do in E4, I've been looking at doing a lot of historical challenges. So if you have any ideas um, that you want me to, to do, for example, surviving, um, for example, winning the, the Great Northern War with Sweden or um, generally just turning around underdogs in conflicts, uh, that could be a lot of fun. So if that's something you want to see, please do let me know and uh, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Huge shout out to our patrons, most notably Charlie Demorel, Krilly, Flyerton, JDow52, Cargon, Xiaomi, Lewis Wright, Nicole's Christ, QA Shard, Redguard, and Shadow Singer. Your support means a lot, guys. Whilst you're here, you might as well click on another video. I mean, it's, it's literally right there.